the honorary degree will now be conferred. I am pleased to welcome Dr. Joseph Peters to present the honorary degree candidate, Dr. Pavel Pesner. Dr. Peters, a professor in the School of Computing Science, is also an associate director of the Software Systems Program at SFU Surrey campus. Dr. Peters. Mr. Chancellor, Dr. Pavel Pesner is a pioneering researcher and educator in the young field of computational, computational molecular biology, a field that's changing the way our, our understanding of what it is to be human. He's a leading authority on using computer science to decipher and analyze the human genome. He's widely regarded as one of the founders of the field, and there's no doubt he's one of its most influential scholars and proponents. Dr. Pevsner received his doctorate in mathematics and physics from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology while working for what is now Russia's National Center for Biotechnology. He then joined the Department of Mathematics at the University of Southern California for two years as a postdoctoral research associate, followed by three years at the Pennsylvania State University, where he won a National Science Foundation Young Investigators Award. In 1995, he moved back to the University of Southern California as a professor of mathematics, computer science, and molecular biology. Since 2000, he's been the Ronald R. Taylor Professor of Computer Science at the University of California, San Diego, and he is the director of the National Institutes of Health Center for Computational Mass Spectrometry. Dr. Pevner's research focuses on combinatorial algorithms in computational molecular biology. His impressive record of scientific accomplishments includes fundamental contributions to many subfields of computational molecular biology, including DNA sequencing, genome assembly, protein identification by mass spectrometry, and computational proteomics. He developed the first efficient algorithm for studying genome rearrangements and a new approach to discover subtle regulatory patterns in DNA sequences. His fragile breakage theory is a scientific breakthrough that disproves the widely believed random breakage theory and its implications for understanding diseases such as cancer. He was awarded the University of California, San Diego Chancellor Associates Award for Excellence in Research in 2007. Dr. Pevsner's pioneering contributions to scientific research community are matched by his contributions to education. Most students first hear about Dr. Pevsner through an introductory textbook that he published in 2000. There are other books on this subject, but this one is quite remarkable. The field of computational molecular biology requires knowledge of both biology and computer science, a daunting task for students who have to work hard to master just one of these subjects. Dr. Pevner's book teaches students the fundamentals of the field in a way that is accessible to computer scientists without uh, biological training and to biologists with, uh, with little background in computer science. In recognition of his excellence as an educator, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute named him a Howard Hughes Medical Institute professor in 2006. The honor was accompanied by a $1 million award, which he has generously used to develop educational programs for computational biology students at all levels. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you confer upon Pavel Pesner the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causis. Pavel Pesner, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Dr. Pesner will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Acting Vice President, Academics, and Dr. Tim Raleigh, Acting Registrar. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations.
It is with great pleasure that I now call on Dr. Pavel Pevner for his convocation address. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the Board of Governors and Senators, faculty, honored guests, graduates, and friends, this is the second convocation ceremony I have attended this year. And at the first one, I played the role of a proud father as my son, Arkasha, graduated from Berkeley. And as many proud parents here surely already done, I ask my son, you're a big boy now. What are you going to do with your life? And he responded, my goal is to work as little as possible and enjoy life as much as I can. <laughs> and right afterwards, he departed on rounds of all trip, and he is surely enjoying life right now, somewhere on the way between Bali and Ibiza. I could never imagine saying something like this to my father. let alone to my 80 years old mother, who is still teaches high school physics. Mm. My parents were first university-educated kids in their family. They worked very hard all their life, and they thought it's the only way. So when my son said that he wants to work little and enjoy life, I thought I probably should sit him down and explain the importance of hard work. But as many parents here surely can commiserate, I, ha I do not overestimate my ability to impact wisdom to my children. And I decided instead to set out to figure out how possibly my son could come up with such a heretic idea. And after some reflection, I realized that it was hypocritical of me to chastise my son because I actually lived most of my life according to his gedonistic axiom. I hardly ever worked in my life. At this point, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, faculty, and all the parents here are probably horrified that they invited the wrong speaker today. <laughs> Please allow me to explain myself. When I was 12, I read a novel, Word Number no. Six, by the great Russian writer Anton Chekhov. This is a book for grown ups. By Chekhov, actually, got his point across to me. His main point was never underestimate the horror of boredom in everyday life and try to escape it by all means. 10 years later, I was graduating from college and similarly to my son and some of you here, I didn't know what to do next. Nevertheless, I ended up working on transportation networks and just five years later, I have my PhD nearly ready. Yet, at this point, I realized that transportation networks are not my passion. And Chekhov's point come back, came back to me, never underestimate the horror of Borido. And at this point, I realized something that my son and some of you here don't know yet.
the, the true meaning of the expression a day in, day out. When you go to adult life, some of you may realize that the life of adults often involves routine, a day out, a day in existence. Uh, Mr. Chancellor was kind enough not to mention that it took me 10 years to defend my PhD. A good student would do it in five years. The reason it took me so long that I decided not to defend my PhD on transportation networks and instead set out to search for my true colleague. I was very lucky. I found a futuristic new discipline called computational molecular biology, and I made my mind. At that point, it was an obscure discipline, and nobody could imagine that a decade later, it would start a digital revolution in biology and genomic medicine. I instantly fell in love, and I have to abandon everything I have achieved to this point. I have never regretted it. Also, for some time, I had to collect empty bottles at Moscow railway station, a semi-legal way to make money in pre-perestroika Moscow. So, after some reflection, I decided that my son was right after all. You should work little and enjoy life. After I became passionate, about what I'm doing. I never had to work a day in my life. I clocked out half a century ago, and I never punched back in. Indeed, even when I put 100 hours a week, it never feels like real work. It's just a pure pleasure and my way to happiness. And if I feel a little bit tired by the end of 100 work week, my wife doesn't feel sorry for me. You need to find your way to avoid the monotony of a day in, day out lifestyle. But you're very lucky. You have now received an excellent education from a great university. And similarly to my son, you are in the beginning of your own journey to little work and a lot of happiness. Just remember, never succumb to mundane day-to-day -day existence, and don't let anybody, even your parents, to stop you if you have to start collecting empty bottles. Thank you, Simon Fraser University, for this fine and valued honor. And thank you all for listening. I wish everybody here to work as little as I do. Thank you, Dr. Pesner.